Hey guys, so today I am going to be giving you a bit of a brief rundown of my first impressions of Ubuntu Mate 16. Now this is the first beta release of it so there could be one or two bugs but I do have to say that this is uh, on first impressions a remarkably stable uh, first beta build so uh, I hope that is a sign of positive things to come. So as you can see here I've had a bit of a play around I've changed the background I've gotten rid of the desktop icons I've changed the theme uh, so I've had a bit of fun just playing around with it I've had a look at some of the new software and today I'm just going to show you not only the bundled software that comes with it but also some of the things that I'm looking forward to see uh, in the uh, in the final release okay so I've always liked the the sort of the GNOME 2 layout which is what Mate derives from I love the fact that they've kept updating it and I think that they've done a fantastic I think they've done a wonderful job when it comes to uh, building a complete user-friendly stable sensible desktop environment that fits just about as many use cases as you can imagine it's fantastic um i used it first as a serious linux user as a, in about 06 as i was starting university i wanted to start university with a linux based distribution i chose fedora with with the gnome 2 desktop and one of the things i really liked about it was how i could just dive in and and just use it. There was very little learning that actually needed to be do, d done on the surface of things. Your applications are here. Your system devices are here. Your system settings are here. That's about the crux of it. Your tasks are down here at the bottom and you've even got multiple desktops which is a feature I really 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 like and I'm glad that it's it's a staple in the uh, in the Linux desktop world. You can even minimize all icons with that button there. I mean, it's all easy, and this layout has not changed in years, and it's uh, better for it. Okay, so let's have a look at the, uh, the, the software that comes bundled with Ubuntu Mate 16.04. So we've got the accessories. You have a choice choice of backup. Uh, usually when it comes to backup, a lot of you will like to, to use your own solution when it comes to that. Uh, I often use something like called Back in Time, which I quite like. So as you can see here, this is also an example of a GTK3 application with client-side decorations that integrates really quite well and really quite nicely into the, the Mate desktop. So you can schedule backups, you can do recent backups, you can choose folders to save, folders to ignore, storage location, and scheduling. So you've got all the basics covered. And that's... Uh, that's 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 that uh so you've got a lot here you've got the calculator which is the sort of the gtk calculator passwords and keys uh you've got a panel at the bottom you've got a nice text editor here this is very similar this is almost like mate's version of uh, kate as found in kde uh, it's as you know as i was going back into previous videos i, I was looking at how i prefer simple workflows as opposed to the complicated ones and often when I want to type up some some documents or whatever I will actually open a text editor before I will open up a a word processor because I mean this has spell checking which is pretty much my only important tool that I'll uh, that I really require out of, of out of uh, text editing or, or, or word processing and then everything else can be done just simply through text it's brilliant so yes this is a pretty full featured text editor for for what you need out of it I say full featured. It covers all the bases. Uh, often, if you use, uh, if you want something for for coding or if you want something for word processing, there will often be something more tailored to that that use case. But I gotta say, something like Pluma, something like Kate, it covers all of my use cases and it comes bundled with pretty much every desktop environment. So the accessories in general, pretty good. Um, I love the fact that almost all de uh, desktop environments now come with a screenshot utility. That to me is very, very important because often when you, you know, you'll see something and you want to capture it on the fly. So that's great. Graphics, what comes in graphics? So you've got the Eye of Mate image viewer, Mate color selection, that's pretty good. Shot well to organize your photos and uh, something to, to, uh, to use your scanner on. All you need, internet. So hex chat, that's an IRC chat client. Pigeon is for instant messaging, things like Google Talk, uh, Yahoo Instant Messenger, XMPP. So that's you've got your, your instant messaging covered. Thunderbird Mail, if you want to use a local email client, which is something that I generally recommend. I've switched to a local client um, rather than using Gmail. It was part of me trying to get off a lot of Google products. And I've got to say, I tend to go for whatever email client comes bundled with my desktop environment. They all seem to do the same job pretty well. But Thunderbird is a solid choice in that department. Transmission is my personal BitTorrent client of choice. Uh, it comes in both the GTK and a QT and a command line version, which I think is amazing. It uh, comes with LibreOffice, which for those of you that are unaware is basically OpenOffice. I 
I'm on the fence about whether or not this should really be included by default into Linux distributions and, and whether or not this can be installed as an easy shortcut in the software center. Maybe something a little less full featured, maybe something like Abbey Word might be more suitable just because you you know it saves space on the on the CD. Most people don't really require the really advanced features that LibreOffice has over something like Abbey Word. Most people, just like myself, I do uh, you know, a lot of word processing, a lot of document you know, shuffling around and all that kind of nonsense. And it's, it's very rare that I'll ever use the mail merge features uh, functions or anything like that in, in LibreOffice. And for the vast majority of my use cases, a very more a much more basic word processing application would be more suitably bundled with this. But I mean, if you know, if you're going to go, you know, it's better to have too much than not enough, I guess, from from that perspective. But yeah, LibreOffice, uh, I mean, I can open up to see how it would work on the uh, on the dark theme, which I've got it configured. I also don't like how long it actually takes LibreOffice to actually boot up. This is probably the first time actually. And there you go. Oh, it doesn't look too bad under the dark theme. That's pretty good. Okay, you know, I mean, it is just your Microsoft Word, but the open source variant of it, and uh, it is it is good for what it is. So there's that. Uh, the Mate Dictionary, Sound of Video. So it comes with VLC Media Player. That is an interesting choice. That is an interesting choice. I do like VLC Media Player. It's very full features. It's a very good media player. But it's Qt based. But then, of course, um, as I understand it, Qt are actually quite good at integrating with GTK, um, especially when uh, you know with with the new library uh, development they've done. I say new. This is a couple of years old now. Um, Kaja is the desktop environment. Dconf editor. That is for more advanced configuration. Um, so we'll just have a quick look at card. Yeah, so this is it. Um, not sure about the black text on the dark background there. I am almost certain there's a way to change that. Um, and in fact, actually, I might very well have changed the theme from a light theme to a dark theme without uh, sort of resetting, you know, logging out, logging in, which can sometimes cause sort of hangover effects like that. And the Mate terminal. It's uh, it's a terminal. It does everything you want it to do. It's what you'd expect from a desktop environment. So it covers uh, covers your bases there. So most of the software that comes bundled with it, you've also got GUVC View, uh, which is for webcams, rhythm box to organize your music, uh, Brazero to create and copy CDs, DVDs. So you've got a lot of software that comes bundled out of the box. This is something that we tend to expect with Linux distributions at this point. So let's start off with some of the things that I am particularly interested in uh, and think that uh, Ubuntu may have stronger Ubuntu Mate is stronger for it. So this is the software and updates. This is the additional drivers uh, which can be found in preferences, hardware, additional drivers. There it is. Uh, and this can allow you to install uh, support for things like NVIDIA graphics card, which is really important. Um, it can uh, wireless cards, and it can also be used for certain um, CPU, uh, the C certain CPU firmware that I believe you can get through it as well. So it can cover all your bases if you're not so um, adamant on having every single piece of your software uh, on your machine um, conform to free software standards, and you might want to you might want to have a have a go on on the Nvidia drivers because to be honest, if you're going to be playing games on on Linux, you're going to need the Nvidia driver. It's really, as far as I'm concerned, the only the only way to ensure that you can get the the best graphical fidelity out of your machine. It's a shame, and I really wish that they would open source their drivers, um, but we are stuck with the situation that we have. Anyway, this gives you plenty of options to install proprietary drivers uh, legally and additionally on top of the system. So that's really, really good. I was so glad when they brought that in quite a few years ago, but it is something that uh, that I think is well received and it's something which which is nearly essential, if you ask me. Because a lot of people who are coming over to Ubuntu Mate are used to, uh, you know, the Windows ways of doing things. And whereas the Windows way of doing things would be to go to the website, download the exe file, and install it, yada, yada. Uh, I like the fact that this presents an alternative way straight to you. So that's really good. Okay, so one of the things that I did check is the Qt integration. So the integration between applications that don't necessarily aren't necessarily designed to fit within the GTK framework. This is Qt configuration, which I think is available in preferences, look and feel, Qt4 settings. 
So you can adjust all of the little uh, intricacies of uh, of how Qt applications are displayed. This is particularly useful if you're running a dark theme, so that you can actually make sure that uh, that stuff looks all right when it's uh, when it's being run from two different engines. This is something that I really like. I love that it's included because I often find with other distributions, I have to install this on top separately, and that often means a Google search working out, you know, uh, what what the uh, the package name is called because I've often forgotten and all that kind of stuff. It came bundled with the distribution right out of the box. Excellent. Mate Tweak. Now this is something which I am particularly interested in. You can tweak many aspects of the Mate desktop. You can uh, decide what uh, what desktop icons are shown on the desktop. I personally do not like desktop icons. I think they're a bit of clutter, but to each their own. That's the thing I like about Mate is that it gives you a heck of a lot of choice and we're going to be getting to that when we get down to interface. So this is again, this covers a lot of the window manager side of things. It's a little bit on the technical side. It's something that maybe your more casual user isn't, isn't really going to be interested in. It is something that your intermediate and advanced user will probably be rather quite interested in, especially when it comes down to things like uh, button placement. So these buttons here, you can switch them over to the left if you're uh, if you're used to the Mac way of doing things, or even the uh, the Ubuntu Unity way of doing things, you get a selection of window managers. So you've got Marco. You can have Marco with no com compos compositor, software compositor, GPU compositor, or Compiz. So I'm just selecting no composition at the moment. I generally don't like composition. It's just to me one extra thing that gets in the way between you and the machine. Some people like a bit of eye candy, that's totally fine. It gives you the choices just through a menu. Absolutely fantastic. And it gives you a lot of these more or a lot of these sort of less obvious uh, tweaks, which are good. So interface. Now this is one that is new to 1604 and it allows you to completely change how the desktop looks. So at the moment we have a user interface labeled as Ubuntu Mate. But the one that has been recently getting a little bit of attention is this one called Mutiny. So we're going to select it and it's going to change the panel layout. Oh, Mutiny. You can see why they call it Mutiny now. This is interesting. This is a much more similar layout to the traditional Ubuntu Unity layout. So for those of you that like Unity or Unity's aesthetic, but you don't like some of the other underlying things about Unity, maybe that you know it doesn't play well a lot with other desktops or whatever, this is... Uh, this is an option. This is an option for you. So it gives you a menu rather than a dashboard here. I think that's important to point out. This is only a very surface level aesthetic. But uh, it allows you, and also one of the things that is actually quite interesting about it is if we go, if we open up our home folder, you'll notice that the uh, the menus are right here across the top. So that's quite interesting. It's very Unity-esque, which in turn is taken from, from the Mac. And you can also change this layout from here, so you can have your panel down at the bottom. Uh, you can even use, um, is it Plank? Um, to bring in your, your panel down the bottom. Case in point, we can do, which is the one with the panel down at the bottom? Here we go. So you've got, you can, you can have something a little more Mac-esque here as well. So that's quite interesting. You've got a number of interesting layouts. You've got the Fedora layout, which is, this is old school Fedora. This is old school Fedora when they were going with the GNOME 2 desktop. There's the GNOME 2 desktop as well. There's some minor changes to it. They've taken away some of the quick launch icons from up here. Mutiny, we've already seen. Netbook, now what did Netbook? Oh yeah, Netbook give you just, uh, just one, one panel at the top here. That's not too bad. I can, you know, all of these are pretty decent, pretty decent layouts. You can save the panel layout. You can make some additional modifications to it. OpenSUSE gives you one panel at the bottom, which is um, like a smart panel. So this gives you the ability to search documents. This is quite good. This is quite interesting. And you can look at documents. You can look at places, all of this stuff down here. And there's more applications, and that's taken us to the application browser, which is quite oh, that's interesting. So it's just yanked out a full window for us. Don't know if I like that. Um, I 
But anyway, we have many, many choices. And then there's Redmond. I think you can guess what Redmond is. It's really just very similar to the Windows layout, which I think is a really quite a good layout, if I'm completely honest. I I liked how, how Windows 95 had their, had their UI down. I like how they modified it a little bit, touch by touch, up until Windows 7, and then le the less said about since then, the better. So I'm going to go with... Should we, let's try Mutiny. Let's, let's try it. Life's for living. Let's let's live on the wild side and try something a little bit more Unity-esque. But I do like that they have some pre-configured um, layouts. This is again is is not really for for well, I suppose it's not really for the kind of people watching this channel, unless you're of course new to Linux, in which case welcome. But um, I think a lot of people who are going to get uh, you know we you know a lot of people can sort of arrange the panels in this way without the without the help. But if you want to install Ubuntu Mate onto a machine uh, to revive either an old Mac or an, or an old Windows box or something else, this gives you a number of options to just ease that transition for a lot of new people into into Linux. Whereas, of course, you could you could set any of these panel arrangements up yourself, but it just takes a little bit more work. This just takes a little bit of aggro out of it. And that's quite good. And it also, I think that it's also designed as a bit of a demonstration for some of the things that the desktop can do, which might not immediately be obvious. So I, I really like that. That's quite good. Uh, excellent. So there we go. That is... Uh, okay. That's, uh, that's the GNOME tweak. So we have two more things on our list. We have the software boutique and we have the welcome screen. So let's go to the software boutique. This again is new. This is rather interesting as well. There is an abundance of software available for Ubuntu Mate and some people find that choice overwhelming. That is a very true statement. This is a carefully curated selection of best in class applications that you have that have been chosen because they integrate well, complement Ubuntu Mate, and enable you to self-style your computing experience. If you can't find what you're looking for, Install one of the software centers to explore the complete Ubuntu software catalog. It tells you exactly what that piece of software is doing, why it's there, and what you can do if you don't, if you think it's getting in the way. Brilliant. Exactly what we needed. So you can even click on software centers. It takes you across to software managers, and you've got the app grid. You've got the Ubuntu software center, and you've got that good old Synaptic package manager. Or, of course, you could just use the command line terminal. The options are there for you. I love this. This is absolutely amazing. It looks fantastic, it looks very slick. It allows you to hide proprietary software. So you've got uh, you've got password manage managers there right at the top. G note, post it notes, G parted, key pass X, that's what I use for my um, password management fantastic tool recent notifications, Redshift, that can be quite good. A number of um, people who actually watch this channel have recommended this to me. It's a great way if you're uh, if you're worried that your computer is keeping you up at night, this can actually adjust the, um, the temperature of your screen, the colors on your screen, so that it can actually help you sync to a, to a sleep pattern that's, that's vaguely sensible. Obviously, you can see why uh, I'm not using it. So there are a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of software available here what I like as well, what I like in particular is it gives you the option to install, well, play on Linux. That's good. Steam. As far as I'm concerned now, if any distribution claims to be user-friendly, it needs to have a way to install Steam. An easy, straightforward way to install Steam right out of the box. It cannot involve going to the Steam website uh, and it cannot involve going through something like the Synaptic Package Manager. If a distribution is going to be considering itself user-friendly, it needs to, to be install installable through either this kind of means or pre-installed because Steam is now such a, a vital part of the ecosystem software available on Linux that it just needs to be there as an option. I know that it's it's not free, but it's, it's in very high demand and... and it's a very useful piece of software and it's a very complicated piece of software as well. I remember in its early stages where I had quite a lot of trouble getting it to run when it was when it was trotting out betas and it was only until they actually released stable uh, that I actually managed to get into Steam in a, in a really big way and it was actually bringing Steam to Linux which actually got me to open a Steam account. And also of course if you have a problem with it you can hide it through the proprietary software which is good. So it's options for everyone and that's 
that's what I like. It's not dictating anything for anyone. It's allowing people to make their own minds up about everything, and in a user friendly way. This is this is the this is almost the 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 best of both worlds. So you've got all of these. It explains in detail and it gives you more. It gives you it gives you the website. It gives you a screenshot. This is this is everything that a software center needs to be. Not overloaded with stuff. It just gives you the best. Uh, that it you know it, it puts its best foot forward. It gives you as many choices as it can, but it doesn't overwhelm you with them. Ubuntu Mate has always, always had, in my opinion, a strong vision for Linux, and this is this is only you know moving it more in that direction. So internet under oh this is interesting. So it gives you the ability to install Adobe Flash right here. Something which I actually uh, don't do so much these days. Whenever I want Adobe Flash, I usually just use the Pepper Flash and Chromium just because it's a bit more up to date and, and, and a little less aggro. And then I keep my Firefox browser flash free. A BitTorrent Sync as well. It's nice that that came installed out of the box. I mean, again, it's not free software. It's not Libre software, but it's, it is useful. <laughs> so um, I, do quite, I do quite like that that's, uh, that's considered in there. The same thing with Dropbox as well. Dropbox, although not free software, uh, again, very useful and has very good Linux support, and I, you know, I think that's at least worth something. Chromium, of course, is released under the BSD license, so that's open source. FileZilla, don't use uh, FTP so much these days. Google Chrome, so you can get... Um, ah, aha! If you are a Netflix subscriber, then Google Chrome is currently the only browser available for... Brilliant! Th that, that description tells you exactly what a load of people are going to, to want to know. Uh, I get a lot of questions down in the comment section of a lot of my videos asking me where the Netflix support, like what, what's the state of Netflix support for for Linux. And and this tells them, you know, this 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 outlines it here and there, here, here and now. Um, it'd be nice if, if that was actually covered in a few more FAQs and things like that. But um, the descriptions, people have given some good thought to these descriptions. The Google Talk plugin, Ice-T plugin. Oh, it even comes with InSync. This is good. This is this is impressive. They have expanded their software base a lot more. Mumble, Opera, Skype, Sync thing, Telegram, Tor browser. You get these people know what they're doing. This 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 is their software selection and their sort of their, their cut down version of it is very it's impressing me a lot. You've even got Evolution, choice of mail clients gives you you know and i like that it gives you oh this is an alternative to microsoft outlook that they've they framed this really quite well alternative to this is brilliant 10 out of 10 man i i have got to say a and it gives you the option clicking upgrade will ensure LibreOffice always stays up to date with the latest stable release now that is something that is something so usually when uh, a distribution like ubuntu mate releases all of the software will stay more or less at its current version number until six months down the line when they'll upgrade the entire system. This is generally for stability more than anything else. This is to make sure that all the software plays nicely together. I like the fact that it gives you the option to have the latest version of LibreOffice regardless of that. I think that's what that does. And that's not too bad because... Um, because it's all written in Java, so providing it plays nice with all the latest, uh, you know, it, 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 it's not too difficult to keep its dependencies in order. That's good. That is clever. Well, I am impressed. I'm impressed. So programming, again, not being a programmer, this is going to go over my head. And in all honesty, I think if you are a programmer, you're going to be more aware of how to get all of the software you want without this this boutique this boutique uh, boutique boutique software boutique seems to be much more for for new users but they've you know they've covered everyone they haven't made conscious decisions to exclude anything uh, or any you know any user base or any use case but they have made sure to 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 streamline and and make everything slick this is this is interesting ambient noise helps you relax or concentrate by creating ambient background soundtrack Man, I this this uh, Ubuntu can can really take a lesson from from this. This is a codex pack. Now that is good. It's 
So it gives you the codex pack. Uh, also, it gives you the ability to install codex on a, on arrival, on install. Handbrake to convert videos. Kazam. This is great. Make MKV is your one-click solution to convert video that you own into free and patents unencumbered format that can be played everywhere. Make MKV is a format converter, otherwise called a trans. Alternatives to brilliant. Pulse audio control. This is brilliant. Very, very, very impressed. Very impressed indeed. It doesn't have Caden Live, does it? No. It's clearly gonna it's clearly leaning on the GTK apps over the QT ones for obvious reasons. Hmm. I am surprised that they're not putting Caden Live in there. This is again easy enough to install. And to be honest, if if again if you're if you're intent on using Caden Live like I am, it's one command out of the command line. If you're not aware of that or una you know unwilling to learn, then uh, Pitv is is likely to to cover all your needs. Wouldn't necessarily call it an alternative to Adobe Premiere Elements. I would possibly call call it maybe more of a an alternative to. Uh, it's better than Windows Movie Maker, not as good as Sony Vegas Pro. It's like it's in that very comfortable Cyberlink Power Director. That's 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 the alternative I would say. And then Spotify. This is brilliant. Their their selection of software, their choices, pretty good. Um, one thing I will say though, it's the smallest of criticisms, is that I don't know if this particular description will possibly answer the question why won't my mp3s play that being said that being said i guarantee if you actually try to play an mp3 fly file it will actually download the codex for you or ask so maybe that might be a bit of a moot topic fixes oh what have we got here your your repository may be out of date um which can cause not found errors broken packages this is brilliant show terminal commands Oh, that's cool. That's amazing. Crikey, I did not expect the software boutique to be this good. I had a scan through it, and I really liked how they 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 got rid of a lot of the superfluous applications and and made it a lot more easy. I had no idea that that, that they were on. Uh... Okay, anyway, I'm going to move on before I I stay on this far too long. Needless to say, I'm thoroughly impressed with it. Another thing I'm thoroughly impressed with is the welcome screen, the Ubuntu Mate welcome screen. Documentation to me is, is an incredibly, incredibly important part of any Linux distribution because you, because you can't have people just uh, getting lost, I guess. I mean, it's maybe, maybe a bit of an obvious thing to state, but a lot of distributions I see do fall down on the um, documentation and some distributions I see have really accelerated ahead because of the distributions. Like you look, you take a look at like Manjaro, their dist their um documentation is is really really quite good and the arch wiki of course everyone knows the arch wiki is a little bit of an an oracle of information uh when it comes to not just for the arch distribution or arch based distributions but just for for knowing how software works and knowing the common problems with a lot of software documentation is king and this appears to have a lot of it right off the bat written in very user-friendly terms. See, it compares itself to Microsoft. See, you can't do this uh, not nearly as much in the commercial software world. You know, the, the rules are don't mention competitors. Don't mention competitors. People will, will you know, they'll, they'll, they'll investigate their competitors and, and, and they might switch. But I think in the, in the free and open source software world, we can afford to be a little bit braver because the number of people who use said piece of software is not contingent on the bottom line in a lot of cases. Um, it obviously it helps if software is is widely uh, and uh, widely well received and that a lot of people use it because that does often lead to a, a bit of a snowball effect which which can lead to, to software becoming stronger and better supported but that really only helps when you've got engaged users and enthusiastic users about your product anyway so marketing at least this kind of you know it, it's less of an issue because because the people that we want involved in free and open source software are the people that want to be involved. There's uh, there's a bit of a match up there. So we could you know we can say well it's similar to Microsoft Windows. It's similar to Apple OS X. It's similar to Google Chrome, uh, and it's yeah it's it's brilliant. It it's 
A stable, easy to use operating system with a configurable desktop environment. Objectives, what is Ubuntu Mate? Good explanations. And it takes its time, it doesn't dumb it down. That's the thing, that's the thing that, that has really impressed me with this, is that it's taken the time to explain things in easy to understand terms without um, bypassing important information. That's uh, that's that's one of the reasons why I'm so sort of taken back and impressed by, by by the the, the thought that goes into what you know these are these are kind of superficial things like the software boutique, the the welcome screen. These are things that I am personally not really going to be using, but it it's definitely making it a, a much stronger distribution for having them in there because bringing new people into the fold I think is something that that you know we can do something we should do and I think something that this does very very well. Pre-configured yet flexible built-in security. So this covers all of that. I'm not going to read through every, all of it. Uh, some of the more important things. Um, so the support. So we've got the community support here. We've got the chat room, and we've got the uh, the software here. So is the software? Does that take us straight? That takes us straight to the software boutique. You can get involved. You can shop. You can donate. The community now is that going to? Yeah, that's going to take us straight up to the. It's going to open Firefox for us, isn't it? I don't think I've opened up Firefox with since I've put on the dark theme, so it'll be interesting to see see what that does for us. There we go. It took a while to load up, but that is probably because it's the first time. Oh yeah, I think it's the first time outright that I've uh, I've loaded uh, Firefox. So there you go. You got announcements. You have got general discussion, development questions, tip tricks, and tutorials, multimedia showcase, media showcase. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Brilliant. So that's that's about it, I think. That's about all the things that I particularly wanted to cover. This is only Ubuntu Mate 16.04, the first beta release. We really haven't seen that much in the way of bugs and errors. Um, so I've got to say, um, fantastic. You know, if I was going to give this a score, it would be near enough. Does my mouse actually affect the background? Oh, it does. Look at that. It's going over. To, it's meeting my mouse. That is, well, <laughs> someone had fun with that, I'm sure. Anyway, you know, obviously I don't give scores to distributions because it's it's very much a horses for courses type of situation. But if I did, this would be 10 out of 10. This is exactly what I wanted to see for 1604. It ticks every box. It's fantastic. I, I got to say, I'm going to be using probably an Ubuntu based distribution f uh, from, from April onwards once they get fully released, maybe even a little bit before. This is certainly a top contender. I've been having a lot of fun with KDE lately, but this seems to be taking itself very, very seriously. And I'm very, very impressed with what it is that they're, they're doing there. And you can start seeing that there's things like this. This is why Ubuntu Mate is getting software deals uh, or hardware deals rather. So, you know, because it, it's, it is a distribution that's, that's fit for everyone and fit for a huge number of use cases. So, you know, brilliant. This is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enthused and I'm impressed. Fantastic. So uh, I do recommend you guys uh, pick it up. Maybe try it in a virtual machine just to see what you're getting yourself into. I am trying this today on VirtualBox using the Guest X11 add-on, which um, a video on this channel will explain how to, uh, how to load in. Thank you very, very much for watching. Um, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.